Hello, I'm Gray for How Bizarre Studios, and in this video I will be talking about 2007's TMNT. In the year 2000, Kevin Eastman was ready to move on to other things, and decided to sell his rights to the Turtles co-creator Peter Laird. Under Peter Laird's creative direction, the Turtles went back to the Mirage comics, where they starred in two comic books, TMNT Vol. 4 and Tales of the TMNT Vol. 2. New contracts for collectibles and adaptations were in the works. In 2003, a new animated series debuted, becoming the best adaptation of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles book. With comic books, an animated show, and a toy line, the next big step would have been a movie. Steve Barron, director of the 1990 show, was planning a TV live-action miniseries that would have had CGI turtles, and a darker tone, more in line with the original comics. This eventually led to a different project with director John Woo, doing a complete CGI film about the Turtles. But the movie went into development hell, and John Woo moved on to other projects. Writer and director Kevin Monroe stepped in, trying to make this animated movie more in line with the original comics, and moving away from the silly humor of the previous adaptations. He even considered taking the Turtles into space, but decided to stay in New York. According to Peter Laird, the movie is set in its own universe, but Kevin Monroe, who wrote the script, says it takes place after TMNT 3, which could be the case or not. In the memento wall, we see elements of the previous movies, but it is not clear if the ooze canister says TCRI or TGRI, and we can see mousers and other objects that came from the comics and not the movies, but it could be the same universe. Jeff Matsuda, who you may have known in the 90s for his work at Marvel, did the designs for the film. During production of the movie, Mako Iwamatsu, who voiced Splinter, died. Having missing lines, actor Greg Baldwin came in to do the remaining lines in Mako's voice, something he already had to do for Avatar's The Last Airbender, after Mako's death. The movie circles around the character of Max Winters, a warlord who used to be named Yautul and opened a portal to a parallel universe, granting immortality for himself but turning his generals into stone in the process. It also released 13 monsters into the world. Since the generals are referred as Winter's family, we have a common theme again between the turtles and the villain, as the turtles are also a family that are struggling to stay together after the death of the Shredder, and are also having problems believing in their leader. The story could very well be a continuation of the previous trilogy, but things have changed for our protagonists. April is now into private archaeology, Casey helps her run her business while still being a vigilante, and the Turtles went into their own lives after Splinter sent Leonardo to Central America to be a better leader, for some reason. The Turtles get involved in the fight by accident, even before understanding the consequences of these events. To be fair, this is very common in Kevin Eastman's stories as well, so it could be said that it was somehow in brand. The movie performed better than anyone remembers, but the critical reception wasn't nice. Most critics complained about the serious tone of the movie, and the lack of goofiness, which is ironic since that same goofiness killed the previous movies. This was inevitable, as the main idea for making this movie was to be more loyal to the source material. Also, people seemed to ignore that the animated series of that time was also very serious. But other reviews made a point about the overall conflict of the movie not being engaging enough. It's not a well-rounded script, which probably affected the movie's rewatchability. Despite the reviews, the movie was profitable enough to guarantee sequels, and two were in the plans. The following movie was going to adapt City at War. Michelangelo would have joined the clan, and the rest of the Turtles would have traveled to Japan and crossed paths with Karai and the Shredder. Then the last part of the trilogy was going to be about Dimension X, the Technodrome, and the Triceratons. But as we all know, Viacom bought the rights to the Turtles in 2009, and the 2014 film was made instead. Despite its seriousness, the movie had a lot of merchandise and a popular soundtrack. So just like the 2003 show, it resonated with its target audience. This is a movie that was mostly rejected by fans of the more lighter adaptations. But that, very likely, is an opinion that could change over time. 
That is all for today. If you enjoyed this video, press the like button and leave a comment. Thanks for watching.